St. Patty's Day, I'd like to ask Councilman O'Connor to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Right hand over your heart, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and a belated happy St. Patty's Day to everyone. Uh, throughout the month of March, it seems communities across the town have been celebrating St. Patrick's Day with parades all along our main streets. Just this past Friday, members of our community joined us on the steps of Town Hall as we lit the Town Hall cupola green. The Irish heritage is etched into the fabric of our community and has made our community all the better for it. So on behalf of all of us at the town board, happy St. Patrick's Day. And let's not forget today, as we celebrate the beginning of spring later or early this evening, we also celebrate St. Joseph's Day. Uh, I'd like to kick off the meeting by recognizing two exceptional students from Brentwood High School, Alicia Asan and Stephanie Pisano, for their outstanding achievements in the National STEM Challenge. Um, these talented seniors have been named among the 125 champions of the prestigious competition, which showcases their innovative solutions to the pressing issue of nitrogen pollution in Long Island waters. Alicia, if you would come forward. Up oh, there she is. Alicia Asan, in fact, if anyone is here joining us today for a family, please come up with, with her and be recognized. And also, if there's anyone from the district that's here. Alicia has made a remarkable impact with her research on the effects of nitrogen pollution on eelgrass. Her proposed method to help restore the declining seagrass by gluing seeds onto live shellfish has the potential to make a significant difference in the health of Long Island's marine ecosystem. Alicia's project has not only earned her a place among the champions of the National STEM Challenge, but also an opportunity to present her research at the Long Island Sound Summit. Um, I don't know if Stephanie is here, but why don't we get your award here? Uh, Alicia, we have your citation. I'd ask the town board to please come join us and we we'll present this to you. And uh... And uh, I'm not sure if Stephanie has arrived or not, but let me read her bio uh, or her project to you. She is an 18 year old from Brentwood, has invented a groundbreaking filter designed to reduce nitrogen pollution from fertilizer runoff and septic waste. Her innovative solution has the potential to positively impact the water quality of Long Island's bays and harbors. Her dedication to her research has not only earned her recognition as a champion in the national STEM challenge, but also a chance to compete in the International Science and Engineering Fair in Los Angeles. This is the success of Leisha and Stephanie is a testament to the exceptional work being done by the educators and mentors at Brentwood High School. The research program led by educator and scientist Rebecca Grella, who's been here many times, has consistently produced high achieving students who have gone on to make significant contributions to the field of science. We're so proud of the outstanding work being done by Brentwood High School students and educators, and we congratulate them. So one more time, let us uh, congratulate both Alicia and Stephanie. And uh, 
Is that Stephanie? Oh, just in time. Perfect timing. Come on up. Let them in. He said there was no more room. Well, tell them to let them in. And uh, will the reps, the reps back up and tell them? We're very strict fire marshals, you know, occupants. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to mess with them. <laughs> Timing is everything. <laughs> this month of March is also National Women's History Month, serving as a poignant reminder of the profound impact women have made on our lives and our community. The town of Iceland takes immense pride in recognizing and celebrating the achievements, strengths, and resilience of women from all walks of life. Their unwavering dedication, passion, and tireless efforts contribute to the rich tapestry of our town, making it a better place for everyone. To help us share in this celebration, it is our honor to highlight a few of the outstanding women from our community who are here with us today. And we're gonna begin with a truly magnificent woman, Edith Gross. Edith, born in Czechoslovakia. Edith, you wanna come up or do you wanna sit there? Sit there and wait, and then, we'll, then you can come up. Edith has lived a life of resilience, strength, and unwavering faith. Despite enduring the tragedy of losing her mother at a young age and the horrors of a Nazi concentration camp during World War II, Edith never lost her sense of humanity and compassion. Her ability to find light in the darkest of times, exemplified by her generosity in sharing what she had, even when it was so little, was a testament to her indomitable spirit. After being liberated by the Allied forces, Edith embarked on a journey to rebuild her life, first in Israel and then in America. Overcoming the challenges of learning a new language and finding employment, she went on to create a beautiful family, becoming a beloved mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. Edith's legacy extends beyond her family as she has dedicated herself to educating generations about the Holocaust sharing her profound story and message of love, kindness, and unity. At the inaugural, as the inaugural speaker of our Town of Islip Unity Council, she came to the lunchtime speaker series and shared her words of wisdom, and they have brought light to the world, making her an inspirational figure in our community and beyond. For her extraordinary life, tireless efforts, and the Incredible mark she has left on countless lives. Please join me in recognizing Edith Gross. Edith, please.
Again, congratulations, Edith, and thank you for coming down today and for all you do. Uh, now I'd like to invite Councilman Jim O'Connor to take the podium to introduce our next honoree, Dr. Janice McCormick. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, each month we do these uh, award ceremonies, and they're very special, and it's very important that we do them and we all enjoy it very much. And, and I know my colleagues will join me in saying that when you have a personal connection and a friendship with the honoree, it makes it even more, all the more special. I see two of Janice's boys here, Max and Gabe. Evan must be studying in Brooklyn Law today. Uh, Dr. Janice McCormick has dedicated over three decades to providing exceptional cardiovascular care to the Islip community. As a highly skilled and compassionate cardiologist, at South Bay Cardiovascular Associates. She has touched the lives of countless men and women offering expert diagnosis, treatment, and preventative care for a wide range of cardiac conditions. Her areas of expertise include echocardiography, cardioobstetrics, adult congenital disease, and cardio-oncology, showcasing her commitment to staying at the forefront of her field. Beyond her clinical practice, Dr. McCormick has made significant contributions to the advancements of women's heart health. She played a key role in launching the Good Samaritan Hospital Women's Heart Wellness Program, and I see some of our folks from Good Sam here today, thank you for coming, which focuses on treating women of childbearing age with underlying cardiovascular disease. Her tireless efforts to educate and empower the community through adult lecture series, school health fairs, and local food pantry support demonstrate her unwavering dedication to promoting heart healthy habits and helping those in need. Dr. McCormick's outstanding achievements coupled with her compassion and community involvement make her a true role model and a deserving re recipient of this year's ISLIP's Women History Month recognition. Janice, if you'll come up please. Thank you so much, Councilman. Now I'd like to invite up Councilman Jorge Guadron to introduce our next honoree, Barbara Raymond Obas. Good afternoon, everyone. Barbara, a tireless advocate for health, equity, and social justice, has made a profound mark on the communities she serves. Born and raised in Brooklyn by her single mother, a West Indian immigrant, 
Barbara learned the value of hard work and the importance of pursuing the American dream from a very early age. Working hard to pay for her college education, she earned degrees in both human services and communications, laying the foundation for her impactful career in public health and community activism. As the Director for Policy Organizational Strategy in the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Focus, Inc., the Civic Engagement Chair for NAACP, Barbara has been instrumental in creating policies that have improved the health services of black and brown communities, protected voters' rights, and promoted equal employment opportunities. Her unwavering commitment to uniting the community is evident through her involvement in numerous organizations such as the New York State Community Action Association, the HIV Advisory Board, and Women Diversity Network. Barbara's leadership in organizing events like the National Week of Prayer, annual multicultural dinner, and National Suffolk ETE, Suffolk Nose Health Fair, demonstrates her dedication to ending the HIV epidemic, combating the stigma and promoting health screening and testing. Her belief that it takes a village to raise tomorrow's leaders inspires her tireless efforts to create a more equitable and just society for all. Please join me in recognizing Barbara. Thank you, Councilman Guadron. And now I'd like to invite Councilman John Lorenzo to the podium to welcome our final honoree, Phyllis Baccio. John? Thank you, Supervisor. Good afternoon, all. I see there's a lot of uh, men and women here from, I have to assume, for Phyllis. Phyllis Patio, a decorated EMT with an impressive 34 years of dedication, I'm sorry, dedicated service to the Holbrook Fire Department, has made significant contributions to her community. Throughout her career, Phyllis has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to saving lives and ensuring the safety of those in need. Her exceptional skills and compassionate nature have earned her numerous accolades, including several life saving awards from the Holbrook Fire Department and a prestigious life-saving award from the American Red Cross. Phyllis's expertise and leadership have been invaluable to the department as evidenced by her role as a second lieutenant, first lieutenant, and captain, as well as her tireless efforts in mentoring and training incoming ENTs since 1991. Phyllis's passion for serving others knows no bounds, <clears throat> as demonstrated by her remarkable response rate and dedication to her duties. In 2023 alone, she responded to an outstanding 623 EMS alarms, 86 motor vehicle accidents, 588 fire alarms, while also participating in 481 ambulance rides. Phyllis's commitment to our community is truly unparalleled. I can get in trouble for saying this next line. I'm, uh, I'm one boy out of a, a whole house full of women. Even at the age of 80, she continues to be certified as an EMT, showcasing her lifelong dedication to this home of action. <laughs> Sorry, Phyllis, my mom would yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis 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 selfless service, extraordinary achievements, and unwavering devotion to saving lives make her a shining example of the impact one person can have on their community and the most deserving honoree for the, our town's women's history celebration. Please join me in recognizing Phyllis Posio. <laughs> Now you can tell that Councilman Lorenzo can talk about the wire wire. 
because there is no way anyone would believe that Phyllis is the age of the earth. Hide out of the way. Let's see. Okay, which room? Gets us close to the door so you can carry all the business, right? <laughs> Everybody steps to left. Everybody steps to right. Russo! <laughs> Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not the wards. Okay. Just I'm more. Sure you my oh, so I want you to be in it too. So. How's that come up right now? Yeah. Caitlin. Get it. Get it. Uh, take care. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Give me that. We're not done. Who? Oh. Oh, we'll give it. To 
If all of our honorees are still here, uh, if you want to come up for a group photo, Edith, Dr. McCormick, Phyllis, and Barbara. Congratulations again to each of these extraordinary women. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, lastly, we have a few announcements. I'll try to be quick. Our next voter safety course will be hosted Saturday, April 13th. Voters born on or after January 31st, 1978 must be certified by 2024. There are only three sessions remaining. So uh, you can go to our town website, isopny.gov, 
and register for the courses, but you need to take that course before the end of the year. Also, the next uh, and final session of walk-in interviews for summer part-time positions will be hosted Tuesday, April 16th at the Brentwood Rec Center. So many people, you know, I want to get my kid a job. This is your opportunity. We'll be hiring for many positions and more details are certainly on our website. And speaking um, of the website, in keeping with our mission to improve services and enhance the ways our residents can interact with our town, we're excited to announce the online planning and development application portal, a convenient platform for property owners to access, access property information, applications, et cetera. It's a necessary leap forward in the modernization of our services. Uh, the new portal comes alongside the launch of Islip Town Square, a one-stop shop and mobile-friendly resource for the most accessed pages and services. Both the new planning portal and Islip Town Square can be found at the website islipny.gov. And finally, we're thrilled to announce a new uh, user-friendly, more than ever, website uh, for Long Island MacArthur Airport, more convenient and accessible, and you can access that by going to flymacarthur.com. So I thank you for your attention and we will get on with the town board meeting. Two scheduled public hearings, and I would ask the town clerk to please read the first hearing notice. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Item number one, reserved decision from February 13th, 2024, to consider amending the Islip Town Code that provides up to a six-month moratorium on battery energy storage systems. Okay, we have six speakers who have signed up to speak on that public hearing. Uh, the first being Fran Lunati. Good afternoon, Town Supervisor Carpenter and the members of the board. My name is Fran Lunati and I reside at 176 Colony Drive in Holbrook. This is not the first time I've come to in front of you with concerns over the well-being of residents. I would like to present to you. Twenty seven hundred and thirteen signed petitions and three hundred signed letters from concerned residents from all areas, especially Holbrook. Our main concern at the present time is the battery storage plant. We are aware of the new request for a six month moratorium, which is a phenomenal thing, and the issuance of permits and or approvals for the best facilities. We realize these best plants are for promoting renewable energy. We are not against this technology at all. Our concern is that they are not perfected for safety reasons so far, more than anything else. In the later part of 2023, Governor Hochul formed the safety working group only after fires at these plants already built uh, on the sites of schools, homes, and businesses without any thought to the safety of the residents. Creating moratoriums are just a pause. Codes need to be changed to where you build these plants. We are here today concerned over the site at 615 Furrows Road in Holbrook, which was once your choice for a best plant. This plant would be less than 100 yards from our homes in the area. Safety should be the first concern. We ask you 
please do not select sites such as this one near our homes, schools, and businesses. We have already been to Brookhaven Town Hall and directed our concerns to Ed Romaine over the site at Morris Avenue in Holtzville. His answer was, leave it up to the governor. We ask for your help and your, to con and your concern to change these guidelines, uh, choosing these sites for safety of our residents. Please do not build them near our homes and schools. Uh, in closing, I would just ask you to please review the zoning codes, Article 2368-317, the industrial development, which is free from dangers of fire, explosions, toxic, and uh, noxious waste um, uh, matter to protect adjacent residential areas by restricting these activities, which involve danger of fire and explosions. There will never be a battery plant which conforms to all the codes which you enforce to keep the community safe. Please do not build them near us. Thank you, Fran. Thank you. Next speaker, Carmela Ricchetti. I also am a resident, Carmela Ricchetti, 232 Fairfield Drive East in Holbrook. I live at the Colony. I moved out here in 1969, moved with my family, and I am a grandmother and a mother, and my grandchildren are still going to Stachem schools, thankful to them for stepping up for us and their lawyers are proceeding also for us. This is dangerous. It's not that we don't feel that the batteries are okay. It's the location. What, that all that stops it is railroad tracks, and then you have the Northville tanks, power plants. There is a tremendous risk. We and I, feel that you as the town board meeting people are here for our safety. I feel secure knowing that all of you have us in mind, our families, our children, <clears throat> our homes. So I'm asking you as a resident of Islip to think about that when you're proposing these proposals of where the batteries will be placed. I'm sure if everyone got together, we know that all the other towns are also facing this issue. We now need Islip to stand up for us. Thank you. Thank you, Carmela. <laughs> um, both of you uh, articulated your concerns very well, uh, something that we have heard. And I think I speak for all the members of the town board in thanking you for your confidence in us in protecting your safety and that of all of our residents. Uh, this is something that uh, I brought to the Supervisors Association so that we can speak you know, with one voice to this issue of the safety of the battery storage terminals. Uh, there are no other cards to speak on this public hearing. I will entertain a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, and this would grant that six month moratorium. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? We have four in favor, one um, negative. The motion passes. Okay, we will uh, go to the second public hearing. Madam Clerk, if you would please read the hearing notice. Item number two, to consider amending the Islip Uniform Traffic Code, Schedule G, Stop and Yield Intersections, Schedule I, School Speed Limits, Schedule J, parking, stopping, and standing regulations. Thank you. Were there any questions? There are no speakers. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to close the public hearing and offer resolution for sit We have a motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, the hearing is closed and it is adopted. Uh, we will move then to the uh, public portion. We have a number of speakers, just to remind everyone, um, you have three minutes. 
And uh, again, it's not a question and answer, but rather to bring your concerns forward, concerns or uh, compliments, whichever you choose. We're here to listen. Uh, and our first speaker is Jim Schlau. Bonjour à tous. Uh, um, first off, Stu from engineering. You know, I wish that uh, you had public information about this kind of stuff in the town because I've been calling for probably 15 years. Somehow I tripped onto Stu from getting shoved from office to office. He left his office to come to my neighborhood and stop a tree that was being cut down. How come that's not common knowledge? Why do I go to these different offices and they say, well, we don't do anything about that? It's a shame that Stu wants to retire. Great guy. Never seen anything like it, except myself. All right. So let's see about the, uh, all right, we got uh, 12 cars and 400 Earls, 900 driveway, three on the street. You know, I'll bet you that they're not uh, apartments that are registered. That's theft of service. You should see my tax bills for the, for the state and the federal. It's ridiculous. I'm supporting all these people that aren't paying taxes. You got to put a stop to it. And then we had the, uh, the driveway that I called about. And it, uh, what's his name over there? Jason told me they need pedigree. Now you've been you've been there four years plus now where you are. You wanted this job. What I'm saying here is you should get with the town attorney to find out they need the birth date of the owner of the house. The front of the house is paved with cement. There's tons of houses like that. And I have pictures here that I want to give you because one of these is resolved, but it's resolved because they were evicted. And who knows what we're gonna get. When that's sold. And there's another house that I called in about with no plates on it. They moved faster. You got, you, you got to my house faster to tow my cars than that one. So they moved. Now, let's see here. Um, this is about the uh, ADUs. Some houses are close together. ADUs will fill the already crowded streets with more cars. Now I got that by me. I don't rent any rooms and I got their cars on my, in front of my house. And your street sweeper think it doesn't even go down the street now because it's futile. There's, there's nothing you can do. And then you got these cesspits that fill up heavy traffic. You've heard about the traffic ad, ad infinitum. You know, I, I don't know where it ends. You've got to stop fooling around with what's going on in this town. We need backbone. We need somebody like a Republican, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, or for instance. Thank you, Jim. We'll let you know when she moves to Iceland. Uh Next speaker, Andy Cross. My uh, speech might go a little long today because I'm here to give my state of the town. So you went for 25 minutes, so you can give me a little le uh, leeway here. When you started off your state of the town message, you thanked the department heads, which you gave them a thirty or $40,000 per year raises a couple of years ago. Also, you said eight years laying a foundation finding bond rating as, as a good rate. But you forgot getting a bid for 30 years for equipment that's usable life is only 20 years. So that's 10 years without a paying, paying for a bond that there's no equipment for. 
and bonding six or seven million for a two million dollar Clemente Park cleanup, which you were on the you were the supervisor when it happened. Was not. Where did the extra money go, and what happened to the ten? What happens for the ten years that the equipment goes past its life? My children's children are going to be paying for this man mismanagement. One has to wonder why the town has good ratings when the town is the best customer, even buying over the amount needed. When you cited code violations, what has been done with the code violations in Central Iceland that have been brought up to you almost every town board meeting, at least for two years, probably closer to five, probably more. What has been what is what has been done is what you call best for our town residents. Why was the road in front of my house not paved for 30 years? Well, roads in West, West Iceland get done every 10 years. How does that happen? And all the roads in Central Iceland and Brentwood getting done every 10 years. Well, have they been done, not been done in 30 years? like mine. IPA incentives given to the five-story apartment building in Bayshore. And what does apartments buildings have to do with IDA? What happens when the school and fire taxes have to go up do the extra kids in the school and fire department buying more equipment just to go up five stories while giving tax rebates from the town, citing a new base your e economic vibration. Nothing was said about the businesses that went bankrupt due to placing parking meters in Bayshore. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Your time is up. Thank you. Next speaker, Lock. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Supervisor Carpenter, members of the town board, and other ISLIP representatives. I am here with regard to the Sunrise Development Change of Zone application. At a town board meeting held on February 7, 2023, a petition pursuant to town law section 265 was presented to the town board. As a result, the change of zone application requires a supermajority of the town board or the application could not be granted. Since a year has gone by, we wanted to make sure that the, app, the petition is still accurate. So a new radius map and a new surrounding property owners list have been obtained from the town. They show that the ownership of one property has changed. Uh, the new owners of that property have signed an additional page of the petition, and that new page is now presented to you with prints of the new surrounding uh, property owners list and map and a short cover letter. If you would please add this to the other 20 pages of the petition that were presented to you a little over a year ago. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We certainly will. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, Susan. Thank Pe you. Susan Pellegrino. Good afternoon, Supervisor Carpenter and town board members. Um, I've been a volunteer for Keep ISA Clean for several, several years and just wanted to thank the board for continuing to support that, um, that organization and to Councilman O'Connor, who represents the majority of Central ISA, that the DPW has been doing a great job with removing some of the blight um, and it's, it's having a, a positive positive impact. I want to thank you on behalf of the Central Isaac Coalition of Good Neighbors for attending our October general meeting and to Councilman Guadron for attending our recent um, February meeting. It means a lot. We look forward to having Council Lorenzo um, attend one of our meetings as well. Central Isaac is unique in that we're split up into three different council districts. Um, which brings me to um, my, uh, my other concern, um, back in May, I, I met with my specific district representative, Councilman Lorenzo, about some general quality of life issues, but specifically the Islip Town Equine Code. And that was followed up with some um, information from other, other town codes. Um, it was 
filed up, filed up with several phone calls and emails and recently a letter. And to date, I have not received a response. So I am very disappointed and certainly look forward to a response soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next speaker, Lee Kennedy. I just like to say thank you for having me. Uh, I went to the Oakdale Civic meeting. Mr. O'Connor was there, and he was explaining some of the things that are happening in Oakdale. One, Byron Lake. Um, he himself thought the pond was going to be dredged. He explained that there's going to be brick around it and water flowing, but not dredged anymore. I know it took a number of days just dredging the little pond in Oakdale, in the artist colony. Uh, I can't believe that no one's gonna at least attempt to dredge half of the, the gook out. Uh, I don't know, after all this work, if the entire problem is gonna be solved if the pond is gonna look nice. That's number one. Number two, I was also informed that there was going to be an, a, a restaurant bar, part of the pool complex, found out that they're gonna be serving alcohol during the day as well as the evening. There are children that ride their bikes to that pond, uh, pool. There are uh, kids that walk to that pool. Uh, drinking, today, you know, you get hit, see more hit and runs than ever before. It's on the news. Uh, more, more alcohol, more accidents because of drinking high or drunk. So this should have been reported, I think, to the community before you made a commitment or sending out an RFP. Uh, and I think that was unfair, not letting the community know. I don't know how they feel. I'm not here representing them. I'm here representing concerns. Uh, my third issue here is Dowling College. Um, I know that they went through a grievance program and they won paying less taxes. But I also know that you had required them to pay $250,000 a year towards maintenance. but you never said what type of maintenance. So now it appears that this could be a whole other scene of what does maintenance mean to them? What does maintenance mean to you? Wouldn't this have been better served with maintenance if this was already pre-planned before you made any statement as to what, what your agreement should be? Uh, number four, I'd like you to write this down. Um, there's been some concerns, some building, I'm not gonna say where they are, that leave our district, our community in danger. Uh, Mr. Connor knows where they are. Now, Byron Park's being added to that. That, I, And I'm gonna hold this town liable. If anyone in my community gets hurt, if there's a car accident, a child gets hurt, because it's not the people, it's, it's, it's you as our leaders that are not doing 100% a, a of, uh, of, of a focus group and knowing what's the best for the community, what is legal and binding. My time is up. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Um, that is it with the speakers who have signed up. Um, have a motion to close the public. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Relax, relax. I just saw it. Thank you. Lisa Mazza. I'm so sorry. Don't apologize. Good afternoon, Town Supervisor Angie Carpenter and Town Board. My name is Lisa Mazza. I live next door to 894 Bay 9th Street in West Islip for over 10 years. I have endured violence, destructive, abusive behavior with dozens of police reports to support. My property has been damaged many times. My car tires slashed, electric stolen. My backyard furniture and barbecue was taken and cut up along with 40 feet of my bulkhead while I was out of state for the holidays. Death threats painted on a fence, dog feces thrown on my doors and windows, hosing inside an open window, and causing flooding damage. Since the prior occupants who squatted in their own home for 12 years are free, we now have bank owned with management company as landowners. They are now squatting, partying, stolen mail, my backyard threatening, throwing food, alcohol, leaving massive amounts of garbage which eventually blew in the bay. The daily amount of strangers, kids, bike gangs, neighborhood nosies seem to think the house is a free-for-all 
with amenities that they don't have to pay for. Sunbathing, partying, wave runners, parked garbage, alcohol bottles, food. They make fires that it's so high. It has melted my siding in spots. I have retained an attorney for protection because if someone gets hurt or God forbid drowns, since the house at 894 has 100% access with no fencing, signage, or is boarded up. The house is also infested with possums, raccoons, cats, and mold. The management company and their friends and family have also helped themselves to my terrace, my fire pit, my cooler, my barbecue, private property signs, barriers, which have also been removed and taken away. Police reports have been filed through my attorney from video camera footage. When people see water, they assume they can come on your property. They can enjoy what you've worked for for over 40 years to afford. We are not rich people by any means. My husband is disabled now. I built a modular house for $284,000 because the government failed us during Sandy. I am still fighting for insurance money. On a side note, across the street, 888 East Bay Drive should be condemned. Neighbors have tried for over 20 years to do so. The owner has rented to gang members with 20 people, eight cars, stolen vehicles, toddlers unsupervised running in the street day and night. It is also infested with animals and mold. No signage, no fencing, or boarded up. It's a hangout as well. I live with cones on my property because the immense amount of traffic on two empty homes brings my house as a turnaround because in the warmer weather, it is a hazard for emergency vehicles that can't pass. One-sided parking would help even for FedEx and UPS. Thank you for all the taking the time to listen to me. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Angie. Our next speaker is Gregory Pepe. Greg Pepe, Icebrook resident. You know, you can only go back into time when the people living along Falls Road had to deal with the Green Rail project. I'm sure you remember that, Angie, because you were supervisor at the time. And now they want to put a battery uh, facility over there. All right. Why would you do that in, in that area, for one thing? Okay, you know, just in the city alone, what, what happens with these fires from these batteries? that the fire departments can even uh, put some of these fires out. They literally have to burn themselves out. So why would you expose these people in a residential area like that? We have the colony, we have a, a large concentration of residential people living there. Okay, that should even be a consideration. A facility like that you would want to put maybe out over by the Pilgrim State grounds where you have uh, acreage and no one pretty much living in that vicinity. Okay, there's other areas where you could put that type of uh, facility, okay? No one's against having green energy. I mean, it's a great thing in a way. I guess it's worth a force of fuels, but to put it on the backs of these people who you know, tried to put the garbage that time, rail cars over there, or Fellows Road, and we felt like heck to stop that. Okay, and then you withheld even information that was sent to you from the DEC that you were going to make a, like a, um, what was it considered a uh, transit station where they needed so many rail cars. It wasn't that they would just send a few and they were, they were guaranteed in order to move that garbage out of there, a certain amount of rail cars to be stored there along those sidings. Okay, so it seems like um, these people are never given a fair shake. You know, it's like uh, another, just send it over there, huh? I mean, is that, that's basically what you're, you're intending to do. Look at Benchmark in East Islip, where you said that the people would have input as far as the zoning change. We had one meeting at the 401 building, okay, that residents came out in opposition. There's over 2,000 people in opposition to that project. Where are the people going to park to use the post office? The post office employees that work there are using that facility, that parking facility at the bowling alley to park, okay? Turn the blind eye on these people, right? We'll just put an assisted living facility there 24-7, clog up Greenview, Greenwood Avenue, and uh, which is now to be here, which where's all the delivery trucks going in and out of? Montauk Highway? Another bottleneck. So all, all these decisions are on you, not the governor. Don't let's blame Hoko, which I'm no fan of, but it's not her, it's you. You're changing all these, I know your eyes are flicking up. 
But it's the truth. If it hurts, it hurts. But I just have to say the way it is. And I wish the best for these people over there in Holbrook. Thank you, Mr. Pepe. Point of information, that battery or uh, storage facility that is being proposed is in the town of Brookhaven. Uh, motion to close public hearing. Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second. Second by Councilman uh, Lorenzo. All those in favor, opposed. The public portion is closed. Thank you, everyone. Okay, the... Uh, I have no clue. I can't stop it. Uh, we have a number of resolutions today, one being the bonding resolution, and one of the speakers uh, erroneous, erroneous, erroneously, mistakenly, uh, suggested that we were bonding uh, something for 30 years that uh, only had a useful life of 20. In order for us to maintain the high bond rating that we have, we follow the rules, and you cannot bond for longer than a useful life. There's kind of like a 525-5 rule. Uh, you, can, you should not be bonding for under $5,000 uh, and not bonding short term. But uh, just so everyone can be comfortable, we do follow the rules and our controller and our town attorney certainly make sure we do. It. Bless you. It's true, as my mother would say. <laughs> um, this town board, there's no challenge in following the rules because everybody does. So we're very grateful for that. Um, first uh, resolution on the agenda is the meeting of the town of Islip Industrial Development Agency. Uh, do we have a motion to convene? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Guardone. All those in favor or opposed, we stand uh, in session. A quorum being present, Mr. Walzer. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and members of the agency board. John Walzer, Executive Director, 40 Nassau Avenue, Islip, New York. I have several items for your consideration today. The first item would be to approve the minutes from the February 13, 2024 meeting. Any uh, changes, alterations on the minutes? If none, I'll entertain a motion. Entertain a motion. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo. Aye. Second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you. The next item for consideration is an, a resolution authorizing, um, is an authorizing resolution, I should say, for a project that you induced at the last month's meeting uh, for VJ Technologies at 89 Carlo Road in Bohemia. Are there any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman uh, Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Thank you. The next item for consideration is a resolution authorizing a mortgage financing um, on behalf of the agency and Islip Yards located at 105 Sweeneydale Avenue in Bayshore. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second. second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Thank you. And the last item for consideration is a resolution authorizing the agency to enter into an escrow agreement along with the Suffolk County EDC and JLL for the creation of a local development corporation to assist the Midway Crossing project. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. That's all the business I have for you today. Okay. Now, with the resolutions to appear before us for this uh, agency, motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilman McElway, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor or opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank you, John. Thank you. We will move now to the meeting of the Town of Islip Resource Recovery Agency. Uh, motion to convene. Motion. By Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor or opposed, we stand convened. A quorum being present. Commissioner Ballou. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the agency board. Uh, Martin Ballou, president of the Islip Resource Recovery Agency, 401 Main Street, Islip, New York. 
have several items for consideration today. First being the approval of the minutes for the from the February 13th, 2024 agency board meeting. Any changes or questions on the minutes? If not, motion. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second. second. By Councilman McDowell, all those in favor? Opposed, they are approved. Next item is a resolution authorizing the president to execute an extension of an existing contract with Clearflow Technologies, Inc. for disposal of leachate generated at agency landfills as an alternate disposal facility to those provided by the County of Suffolk. Any questions? Motion? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. The next item, the last item is a resolution authorizing the president to enter into a contract extension between the agency and FPM Group BC to provide professional engineering services for the preparation of semi-annual and annual Title V compliance reports and the annual air emission statement reports for the Blydenburg Road Landfill Complex as required by the New York State DEC and the US EPA for the years 2024, 25, and 26. Thank you. Any, are in, there any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. There is no other business to come before us. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Lorenzo, second, second. by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Opposed? We stand adjourned. And happy St. Joseph's Day. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much. And a belated St. Patty's Day to you. Okay. Uh, next resolution, authorization supervisor to enter into a contract with Granny Corning for the provision of solid waste services within Fair Harbor Garbage District for the years 2024, 25, and 26. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second. second. By Councilman McElway, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Uh, next, let me just make sure I have this straight. Okay, next we have uh, town board authorization to clean up or secure certain properties uh, in the town of Islip. I see Jeff is here. Uh, to walk us through this. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Supervisor, members of the town board and the town clerk, Jeffrey Panacci, Assistant Town Attorney, 655 Main Street, Islip, New York. I have four properties on for your consideration here today. Number one is to clean up the premises located at 504 Rockaway Street in West Islip. On this vacant property, there now exists overgrown vegetation and large fallen tree branches as well as litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with a property interest in this premises. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion by Councilman uh, Lorenzo, second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Number two has been withdrawn as the property is now in compliance. Number three has also with, been withdrawn, excuse me, as the property is now in compliance. And number four has been withdrawn as the property is now in compliance. So that's all I have. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you very much. We will move to uh, resolution five, which are the appropriation transfers. Are there any questions? I know everyone's reviewed all of this. Motion. Hearing none, motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item six, um, town board approval for the listing of eligible participants for the 23 Active Volunteer Workers Service Award Program, LOSAP, for the Baker Bright Waters Rescue Ambulance and Exchange Ambulance of the Islips. Any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Item seven, the bid awards. Uh, again, they've been reviewed. Are there any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second. second. By Councilman McElway, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Next, item eight, the option year resolutions. Any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion, motion by Councilman O'Connor, second. second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Opposed, approved. Next, we have the meeting of the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority Board. 
Make a motion to convene motion. the board. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor, opposed, we are convened. The meeting, uh, a quorum is present. Mr. Hemingway. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Foreign Trade Zone Board. My name is Brad Hemingway. I'm the Executive Director uh, of the, foreign, the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority located in Ronkonkoma, New York. I have just two items for your consideration today. The first item being approval of the minutes from January 23rd, 2024, the meeting of the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Board. Um, any questions on the minutes? Motion, Motion by Councilman Wadron, second. By Councilman McElway, all those in favor, opposed, approved. Uh, item. Next item is authorization uh, for PKF O'Connor Davies to conduct the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority year-end 2023 audit. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. Second. By Councilman McElway, all those in favor, Aye. Aye. opposed, it is approved. No further. And motion to adjourn. Motion. The foreign Second. trade zone by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Wadron. All those in favor, opposed, we stand adjourned. And it takes us to item 10, authorization with town clerk to advertise for public hearing to consider amending the town of Islip uniform traffic code. Any questions? Motion, motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. second by Councilman uh, McGillway. All those in favor, opposed, it is approved. Uh, item 11, authorization for supervisor to enter into a contract with Hink Electrical Contract Inc. for DPW 1 2024, maintenance and modernization of traffic signals. Any questions? Motion. Hearing none, motion by Councilman O'Connor, right, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 12, authorization supervisor to enter into various agreements for programs or events to be held throughout the town. Uh, lots of uh, parades, et cetera, and runs this time of the year. Any questions? Motion? Motion. By Councilman Guadron, second. second. By Councilman McElway, all those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Uh, next, we have item 13, uh, authorization supervised to execute contract with Terry Contracting Corp for DPW 8-2023, Maple Avenue Dock, Bulkhead and Utility Improvements, Phase two, any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion, motion by Councilman McGillway. Second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Item 14, authorization for the supervisor to execute any and all documents required to apply for and accept grant funding from the Dormitory Authority of the State of New York for the improvement to the Atlantic Marina and the Bayshore Marina. Any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Item uh, 15 is uh, a resolution for the acceptance of a monetary donation from Catholic Health, Good Samaritan University Hospital, to sponsor the Town of Islip's 2024 entertainment series. And that is a whole series of movies and concerts across the summer season, so we're very grateful for that donation. It's something that our residents really, really enjoy. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Gaudron, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. <clears throat> uh, item 16, authorization supervisor to apply for and accept funding from the Suffolk County Office of the Aging for expanded in-home services for the elderly program. Motion by Councilman McGillway, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 17, acceptance of a deed from Jane Nazaro Partnership LP in connection with the corner radius dedication at the northwest corner of Atlantic Avenue and Main Street in West Sable for highway purposes. Any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 18, acceptance of a deed from James Spizzato and Jonas Spizzito for the premises located at 12 Colonial Court, Bayshore for drainage purposes. Any questions? Hearing none, motion by Councilman McElway. Second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item uh, 19, authorization supervisor to execute an amendment to the contract DPD 3-21E1, Exchange Ambulance of the Islip's Electrical with Commander Electric. Any questions? 
Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 20, authorization with the supervisor to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the village of Brightwaters, wherein the village will reimburse the town for the services provided by farm fire marshal within the village. Any questions? Motion by Councilman McElway, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 21, town board approval to consent to the assignment of the contract with United Public Safety, Inc. I'm sorry, did I miss something? No, no, oh, sorry. Okay. I'm off, I'm off. That's okay. So this is the town board approval to consent to the assignment of the contract with United Public Safety, Inc. to T2 Systems, Inc. No changes, just a ownership change. Any questions? Okay. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. Item 22 um, are the special events. Again, lots going on. Any questions? Motion? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Right. Opposed, it is approved. Item 23, authorization for the supervisor to execute a professional services agreement with Johnson, Cocada, and Lucchese engineers. PC for engineering and design services relating to the installation of a new connector taxiway B3, including lighting at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second. second. By Councilman uh, Guadron, all those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 24, authorization for supervisor to execute a professional services agreement with JKL Engineers, PC, for engineering and design services relating to the installation of approximately 20, uh, 52 taxi weight B. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Gardron. Second. Second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Item uh, 25, authorization for the supervisor to execute any and all documents necessary with JKLL engineers, PC for engineering and design services relating to the new connector taxiway D1 uh, between taxiway D and runway 624. Any questions? A motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 26, authorization for supervisor to execute all documents necessary with Johnson, Cocada, Lucchese, Engineers, PC, for engineering and design services relating to the rehabilitation of taxiway D pavement and replacement of the edge lighting system and guidance signs at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron, second. second. By Councilman O'Connor, all those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 27, authorization for the supervisor to execute all documents necessary for a change order with J. Anthony Enterprises, Inc. or general contracting services in connection with phase two of the rehabilitation of the main terminal building at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? I do, have, I do a few questions, Madam Zuber. Certainly. Councilman Lorenzo, I know the commissioner and deputy are here if you want to come forward. Good afternoon, Supervisor and members of the town board. Hi, Commissioner. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I'm just curious what, why I've, I've been hearing some horror shows uh, with the baggage area and, and, the, and the phase of construction, people have been calling me, it's my district, regarding the bags flying off the baggage claim and, and all this different stuff. So I'm, I'm curious, I'm assuming this is the same contract that installed the claim baggage area that's there now? So this is the general contractor. There are five contractors on the job. Um, but in the, so this is Jay Anthony. So they did install electric uh, units on the bag claims so that the eyes could find the bags and know where they were at. And then we installed additional guards on the bag belt units. But the design was done by a different contractor, obviously. But it isn't, if they're a general contractor, they're kind of in control of all Is that how it works over? Uh, they perform the work as it was designed and how we procured the systems. So if there's failures in the systems, then their job is to correct those. And that's what a lot of this is. So, we're, so why are we extending? Seven hundred and twenty-four thousand six hundred. If they have to correct still flaws in the system, so the bag claim units have been fixed. 
And so all the bags are staying on, on the bag belts. Um, there are a couple of things that are part of this contract, which is uh, the project has gone on 12 months longer than anticipated. So the, the contractors, all of them, um, have had to extend their insurance. So that the project was originally only planned for 12 months and now it's going 24 months. So that's part of this change order for J, J. Anthony. Um, there were also some bump outs that we had to modify from the original design. Um, there are security TSA standard bump outs, um, but there were electronics that needed to go in those bump outs that were not, the space wasn't adequate. So we had to make modifications on the job. So that's what a lot of these changes are for J. Anthony in particular. Right, I, I, would, I would like a little more time. I would, I would like to make a motion to table this resolution so we can have some more time and I can look into more just because I, I just I have a hard time extending that when they held the work and did the work and and it's not done. So I'd like to make a motion to table. Uh, res, res Before I entertain that motion to table, I just have a question for the commissioner. Where are we in this and will tabling cause any kind of hardships for our passengers at the airport? And secondly, I see here that there originally was a bid that was withdrawn, and then this one that we're looking to authorize today was the next apparent low bidder. So does that explain for the difference? No. Um, the <coughs> bid that uh, acquired J. Anthony initially, um, there, was, there was a provider before that, a contractor that had been on the job before that, and then they withdrew their bid. Um, we went with Jay Anthony. They were the lowest bidder okay. for general contracting services. Next. Sorry? Next lowest. Yeah. Loduca and Associates were the lowest. They went mm -hmm. through their bid. Mm -hmm. Jay Anthony was the next lowest. Right. Correct. Thank you. And my question about what delaying this for a month will do. It, it could postpone the job from moving forward. Um, I... There's a lot of moving parts, obviously, in phasing and things like that. And so if we delay the job another month, for example, we will also have to extend insurance again for J. Anthony one more month so the costs start to add up. But um, it's up to the board. Okay. So there's a motion to table this. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion um, and a second to table the resolution. All those in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Motion is tabled. Um, I don't think that we have any subsequent uh, meetings in the interim, but should we do, if you find that this causes a problem and once all of the questions have been answered, I'd be willing to schedule a special meetings so that we could keep things going at the airport so that our passengers are not inconvenienced anymore. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Do you want me to stay here because the next resolutions are ours? Um, the next resolution is um, authorization supervisor to execute all documents necessary for change order number two to an on-call agreement with Arcadis of New York. Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Okay. Second by Councilman Delway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Item 29, authorization for the supervisor to execute all documents necessary for change order number two for L.K. McLean Associates PC to complete Phase two of the rehabilitation of the main terminal building. Any questions on this resolution? Yeah. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. Item 30, authorization for supervisor to execute all documents necessary for change order number two for Commander Electric, Inc. to complete phase two of the rehabilitation of the main terminal building at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second, second. by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor, Aye. opposed, approved. Item 31 uh, is an authorization for the supervisor to execute an agreement with Suffolk County to receive funds for the Long Island MacArthur Airport as outlined in a recent amendment to Suffolk County's local law, 13-23. Are there any questions on this? Motion by uh, Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman Lorenzo. Uh, finally, after years of, of lobbying to get some small portion of the hotel motel tax, uh, the town is finally uh, reaping the rewards, minimally though, uh, but it is funding that will go towards advertising for service at the airport. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? 
opposed, approved. Item uh, 32, authorization for supervisor to execute all documents necessary for change order. Number two with Banner Electric Corp for additional electrical services in connection with the main terminal. MEP upgrades at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Next is an authorization for supervisor to execute all documents necessary for change order number one with WHM plumbing and heating contractors for additional services in connection with the main terminal building and MEP upgrades at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Item 34, authorization for the supervisor to, ex, uh, to enter into a license agreement with exchange ambulance of the Islips for usage of a portion of the premises located at 100 Carlton Avenue in East Islip. Any questions? Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Item 35 uh, is a board approval for the consent to the assignment by the estate of Gilbert J. Hersey in connection with real property located on Capture Island in the Great South Bay to Jared P. Cromelli. Any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Gardron, second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? We have four in favor, one abstention. The motion is approved. Item 36 is a board approval for a modification of covenants and restrictions associated with TC 47. 52. Are there any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guardrone. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Appro opposed. It is approved. Item 37 is board approval for a change of zone from business one to business three associated with TC 5422. Uh, public hearing was already held and closed on this. Any questions? Hearing on motion. No. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo. Second by Councilman Guardrone. All those in favor, Aye. opposed, it is approved. Item 38 is an authorization with the supervisor execute agreement with dogs playing for life. Any questions? Motion. Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor, Aye. opposed, it is approved. Um, item 39 is an acceptance of a beautification undertaking from the common ground to repair the labyrinth at Rosary Park in Sable. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion by Councilman Lorenzo. Second by Councilman McElway. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, it is approved. Item 40, authorization for supervisor to execute an agreement with the Community Development Agency for the parking improvements at the Central Islip Senior and Recreation Center. I see that the director of the CDA, Julie McGibbon is here. Thank you for all your uh, help and all that the agency does. We do appreciate it. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. 41 is an approval for the conveyance of three properties owned by the County of Suffolk to the Town of Islip Community Development Agency for affordable housing purposes. Again, Julie, thank you for all your help on this. This is really remarkable. Uh, any questions? Motion, Motion by uh, Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed, it is approved. Item 42, approval to symbolically rename Sequoia Way and Shadow Grove Lane in Holbrook to Sergeant Lewis Vasquez Way. Any questions? Motion, we'll have that motion by what's your district. No, Holbrook is Lorenzo. Okay, Councilman Lorenzo made that motion, second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, that is approved. Uh, we move now to the capital budget amendment, which is item 43. Uh, Joe, if you want to come forward. Sorry. Joseph Ludwig, controller, 401 Main Street. Okay, we um, have before us a resolution. We adopted the capital budget. And this uh, would move uh, or modify it. You want to explain? Sorry. Yeah. So the unfortunate problem with doing a budget in the summer is that it does not always have an actual tangible effect to what we're going to do eight months after the fact. 
So the amendments that you guys see in front of you, these are all projects that we thought were going to be good and ready to rock and roll with in August. Um, as the world does, prices change, projects change, priorities change. So what you see you have in front of you, for the most part, is kind of swapping from one project to another, specifically in the case of recreation and IT. Some of the other departments were just projects that um, kind of came up after the fact. The one I'm going to mention specifically for public safety was we've recently now allowed our fire marshals to be armed. So therefore, they also need the body armor, something that was not anticipated when we did the budget now gets folded in. That is the really simplistic way of looking at the amendment you have in front of you. If there's any specific questions on a change, by all means, just let me know. Thank you very much, Joe. Are there any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Gardron. All those in favor? Opposed? The budget amendment is approved. Now we go to the bond resolutions. There I'm are so 11. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. If I can, just to dovetail off of something you said before about the bond resolutions. Yeah, and I know please. it's been mentioned repeatedly that we borrow for 30 years and our children's children's children are going to pay yeah, for things. Okay. <laughs> it needs to be noted that every type of generic commodity that we're going to bond for has an authorized legal period of probable usefulness, hence its legal life. You cannot borrow for longer than the legal life. So if we have an item that's five years, that resolution is only good for five years. If we have something that's good for 40, that's good for 40. Now, there are two ways that we can pay our debt service. It's a little confusing, so I'll try to keep it as simplistic as possible. You can pay each debt service off for each bond. So this project will be paid off in five years. This project will be paid off in 40 years. From my standpoint, it makes my life a nightmare because now I have to change the amount we budget every year for debt service. The other acceptable ways, and this is kind of the standard that most people do it, it's a weighted average. And our weighted average usually kind of comes back to where within the 13 to 15 year range, more times than not, it's 14 years, and our debt service is paid off in 14 years. It is not extended. Is there a chance that we could have a five year asset that's not still here in 14? It's possible. Does it happen? I mean, probably. Is it the general rule? No. Commissioner Owen specifically takes care of the facilities takes care of the fleet, takes care of the equipment. We get our things to last usually a lot longer than the debt service even is. So we'll have vehicles that are 20 years old, that debt service has been paid off five plus years. Um, I'm just gonna mention this now, it is the next resolution that's gonna come up and that's the refunding resolution. Again, it's been mentioned that we can refinance our debt service and now our debt service is going out, extended, extended, extended. Again, it needs to be noted that um, New York state law precludes that from happening. So if we have four years left on a refunding issue or, or a bond issue that we're gonna refinance, it can only be re refinanced for that same four year period. You can never extend the debt, ser debt service useful life. Hopefully that made sense. Absolutely, not, thank you. Again. Okay, let us go. Um, these are all roll call votes on the bond resolutions and each has to be considered individually in the first bond is for various purposes, immediate improvements, and that's uh, 3.975. Uh, are there any questions on this one? Do we have a motion? Motion. A motion by Councilman McElway. Second. Second by Councilman O'Connor. Uh, roll call on the vote. Councilman Actually, I think you need to go with who made the resolution, who made the motion in the second, correct? That's the way traditionally we've done yeah. it. The person who made the motion is asked first. The person who made the second is asked second. And then go to the rest. Okay. Yeah. So. Councilman McGillway? Yes. Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. And Councilman Watson? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. 5 0, that is approved unanimously. Okay, let us go to second bond resolution for town facility improvements. That's 1.4. Um, any questions on this? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Motion first. I'll make the oh, motion. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Lorenzo. Roll call on the vote. Councilman O'Connor? Aye. Councilman Lorenzo? Aye. Councilman Guadron? Aye. Councilman McElway? Aye. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Five. Perfect. Okay, we will go to the third bond resolution. 
which authorizes the construction of improvements to the Casamano Park soccer field. That's a million dollars. We've been given grant funding for that. This has been going around a long, long time. So it's nice to see we're finally getting there. Again, if I may just interrupt real quickly. Um, it was either last year or two years ago, we had approved the bond resolution before we had all the state BOT requirements. Um, bond resolutions last for 10 years. So that's why the number you have, Madam Supervisor, was how much? One million. That's going to be added into the bond resolution that was previously um, authorized, and I believe the project was two point six million. Mm -hmm. Is the estimate with the grant funding that you said? I just want to explain. There's a difference, and that's why. Thank you. <clears throat> um, is there a motion? A motion by Councilman McElway. Second, Second by Councilman Guadron. Uh, roll call on the vote. Councilman McElway. Yes. Councilman Guadron. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes. Um, the fourth bond resolution authorizes construction and road improvements. Uh, this is $10 million, uh, probably 10% of what we could be doing, uh, the needs across the town. But we have systematically really been addressing this, and I thank the commissioner, uh, Owens, and his staff. Uh, they really have been very diligent about trying to get our our uh, paving program up and running and, and we have seen the fruits of it and we just ask everyone to be patient. Everybody wants their road paved. We do assessments all the time. The road that is the worst is gonna get paved first and uh, that's kind of how it's worked real well. So mm -hmm. any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second. Second by Councilman Guadron. Roll call on the vote. Councilman O'Connor. Councilman Guadron. Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Aye. Councilman McGillway? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. The next fifth bond resolution is for sidewalk and asphalt improvements. That's 1.15. Uh, that too is something that we've been trying to improve over the years. And uh, are there any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second. Second by Councilman O'Connor. Roll call on the vote. Councilman Guadron? Yes. Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. Councilman McGillway? Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Uh, the sixth bond resolution authorizes the acquisition of heavy duty vehicles and equipment. Uh, that's 2.078. Uh, 2 Any questions on this? Just sure. <clears throat> Six. Yes, thank you. No problem. Any questions? All right. Uh, motion? motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second, Second by Councilman McElway on uh, roll call on the vote. Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman McElway? Yes. Councilman Guadron? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Okay, the seventh bond resolution authorizes the construction of park improvements. That's 2.9 uh, million. Uh, we've made progress, but we need to keep going. Um, I think everyone can agree. We've seen a lot of really visible improvements across the town, uh, but there's more to do. Any questions? Okay. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman Guadron. Uh, roll call on the vote. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Guadron. Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. Councilman McGillway? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. The eighth bond resolution is for turf field improvements, and that's 7.6 million. Uh, again, we have done some, and we're trying to be equitable going across the town with uh, turf fields. Uh, not only does it make the playing surface available uh, a lot more readily, it has helped with drainage because the water you know, there are pumps and drain systems underneath it so that the playing field time has really increased dramatically with the turf fields. Um, and certainly the maintenance of them is a lot easier than the others. Any questions? Motion. Motion by uh, Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman McElway. Uh, roll call on the, on the bond. Councilman Guadron? Yes. Councilman McElway? Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo. Madam Supervisor? Yes. 
Motion passes 5 0. Uh, the ninth bond resolution is for acquisition of boats for use by the town, and this would be our public safety division. Um, as a town that has their entire southern border on the water, uh, the need to be there for those in distress and for uh, public safety purposes certainly is unquestionable. Any questions? Motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman O'Connor. Roll call on the bond. Councilman Guadron? Yes. Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? No. Councilman McGillway? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes four to one. Uh, the 10th bond resolution is for parking lot improvements, uh, and that is $1 million. Uh, we have systematically been trying to do that. Uh, especially in the hamlet of Bayshore, as they have the parking management program. Uh, but there, again, still work to be done, not just in the hamlet of Bayshore, but across the town. So um, motion on this particular uh, motion by Councilman McElway, uh, second by Councilman Lorenzo, roll call on the, on the vote. Councilman McElway. Yes. Councilman Lorenzo. Yes. Councilman O'Connor. Yes. Councilman Guadron? No. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes four to one. Uh, the 11th bond resolution is for drainage improvements. Um, you know, this is a problem across the town. I, I said we're on the water, but drainage problems are occurring not just on the low lying water front areas, but across the town. Uh, we've seen it in Brentwood, we've seen it in Holbrook. Um, and trying to address these drainage improvements. Um, any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Guadron. Roll call on the vote. Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman Guadron? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. Councilman McGillway? Yes. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, that uh, takes care of the bond resolutions. Joe, thanks again. And now the final on, on item on the agenda is the refunding bond resolution. And we thank Joe for being so diligent in uh, eking out opportunities for us to save money. And certainly when we can do a refunding like this without, as uh, Joe said, without increasing the life of the bond, but getting the, doing it at a lower rate, certainly in order to our benefit. And do you have a figure uh, offhand that this will save us over the life of the bond. So what you guys have in front of you, and swear to God, I never thought I'd be seeing one of these again in my career, but there are still a few older debt services that are kind of getting close to the opportunity for the refinancing to bore everybody. You basically need to show a present value savings of at least 3% for the state controls office to sign off on a refi. We are not there yet. <clears throat> But with the way the rates are changing, and God only knows what's going to happen um, as we continue, it just made a lot of sense to have this in place so that if the rates do switch into our favor, we're able to act, especially if it happens in between board meetings, so we're not waiting for that two weeks and then potentially miss the opportunity. So as of now, there is no number that I can say that we're going to save. There's a potential we may not even be doing refinancing if the rates don't move in our benefit. Mm -hmm. But like I said, this is kind of just one of those just in case, let's be ready in case it does. Belt and suspenders. Exactly. works. Okay. Um, any questions? I will make that motion. Okay. Second by Councilman O'Connor. Um, do we need a roll call on this also? Yes. Yeah. Uh, roll call on the vote. Madam Supervisor? Yes. Councilman O'Connor? Yes. Councilman Guadron? Yes. Councilman Lorenzo? Yes. Councilman McGillway? <laughs> motion passes 5 0. Great. Thank you. Again, thank you very much, Joe. And we have no other business to come before us. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion by Councilman Guadron, second right. by Councilman McElway. All those in favor, opposed, please stand adjourned.